and sisters, and welcome to a, a new week and a new day. And I welcome you as you gather with us uh, to open God's word and begin our day uh, in devotion to the Lord, that we might hear from him, uh, that we might uh, be stirred by his spirit, and uh, that we might listen to him as he speak through his word. So I'm going to invite you to take a copy of God's Word and turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 19, uh, where we're going to be this, this morning is 1 Kings chapter 19. And we're going to begin our reading um, in verse 9 of chapter 19. All right, 1 Kings chapter 19. There he went into a cave to spend the night, and the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. They've torn down your altars. They've put your prophets to death with the sword. And I am the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. And the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and a powerful wind tore the mountain apart. It shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire came a gentle whisper, a still, small voice, King James says. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face. He went out and he stood in the mouth of the cave. And the voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. They've torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. And I am the only one left. Now they're trying to kill me too. And the May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Now, this is a, a fascinating story in Scripture. And really, you know, we're just reading a small portion of it as part of our devotion this morning. And let me remind you where, what's happening. Uh, there's been a famine in the land by the word of the Lord. Elijah prayed and it did not rain. All right, and, and you remember um, that famine was severe. And then God approached the king. Um, and told him that uh, to, to take to meet him on the top of Mount Carmel with the prophets of Baal. And there was this contest between the gods. You remember the prophets of Baal were given time to call out to their god that he'd rain down fire, and he was silent because he was non existent. And Elijah prayed, and God rained down fire from heaven, and the prophets were killed. and uh, the people said they would serve the Lord. There was the evidence of a great revival taking place. In the spirit of the Lord, um, Elijah prayed and it rained. And he ran and he beat the, the king down the mountain by running. And the king in his chariot, uh, Elijah beat him down the mountain. And when he gets down the mountain, he gets word that the queen, Jezebel, uh, said that he would, she would take his life. And when he heard this, he fled. He ran. He ran from, from Israel. He ran all the way out into the wilderness, into the Sinai wilderness. And the Lord took care of him under a broom tree where he laid down and slept. And where he declared to himself that I am, I am no better than my ancestors. So... What does that statement mean? Well, it, it meant uh, he saw himself as good as dead. And now he's, he's come to this cave 
uh, and he's been in the cave and God comes to him there and God asks the question, what are you doing here? Well, um, that was an introspective question, right? God asks him a, a very important question to have him look at what's going on in his life. All right, and the question is not so much about his location as it is about his condition. What are you doing here? He, Elijah is in a in a place of a backslidden state. He his his heart was living under fear. He was out of the will of God. How do we know that? Well, it, where he was is evident of that. He has left the promised land for the wilderness. All right, he ran from it. He ran in fear. He was living, and here's, here's, here's where it is. He was living by his own reasoning rather than the revelation of God. Right? God had been giving him instructions on where to go and what to do and what to say all along. But when he heard this word, secondhand, by the way, that Jezebel was going to kill him, he made his own decision to run and leave everything behind. What he was leaving behind was the revival that God had started. All right, he, God had started this, this great revival in the Mount Carmel for the nation to turn the nation's heart back to him. So what does that tell us? Well, I think for our hearts, what we need to see in this is Elijah began to focus on what the enemy was doing rather than what God was doing. We can fall into that same trap, brothers and sisters. We can begin to focus on what the enemy is doing and ignoring what God's doing. God had shown Elijah. God had sent Elijah. God had given Elijah a word that would bring revival, He'd bring restoration to the land, bring rain to the land. But Elijah was looking at the enemy. And the enemy makes his work very obvious to us. Uh, all we have to do is watch, watch the news, uh, read the paper, and we see the enemy is busy. But brother and sister, God's busy. God is working to draw men and women and boys and girls to himself. He's working through his people. And you are not the only one. See, Elijah was telling himself a lie that he was the only one, but he wasn't the only one. We'll see that tomorrow. We're going to look at this again tomorrow. But today, what I want you to understand is, is that God may be asking you that question. What are you doing here? You're not where I've sent you. You've not, you're not doing what I've called you to do. You're not being the person I've made you to be. If that's the case for you, then call out to the Lord today in repentance and renewal. Give your life, your day, the day before you to the Lord, that you might be used of him for his glory and for his kingdom. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, we thank you for your word today. And as we, as we read it together, as we listen to it, Father, we want to, uh, we want to hear from you. We lean forward to hear your voice. Lord, it may be that you're saying to us, like you said to Elijah, what are you doing here? Let us answer that question honestly. We want to serve you. We want to live for you. We want to lift up the name of Jesus. Show us how today that we might do that in such a way that we give you honor and glory. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Have a wonderful day in the Lord.